The RAI in RAI therapy stands for radioactive iodine. I have no idea why they use RAI instead of just RI, but there's probably a complicated medical reason for it. RAI is typically used on thyroid cancer patients after that organ has been surgically removed. As far as cancer treatments go, this is one of the easier ones. Unlike chemotherapy that often requires repeated doses of drugs with adverse side effects resulting in a major negative impact on patients' lives, RAI usually consists of a single session with relatively mild to no side effects. The patient swallows a capsule filled with radioactive iodine, which then makes its way to the area where the thyroid used to be, burning away any leftover thyroid tissue. Doctors call this ablation, but it's much sexier to think of it as a really tiny nuclear explosion in your neck. The reason it's so important to make sure all the thyroid tissue is gone is because that's where any remaining cancer cells are likely to find a foothold and grow more tumors. This video is about the steps I took during my RAI and is absolutely not meant to replace your doctor's instructions. It's even possible some things here contradict what you were told to do. While agreeing on most major things, oncologists all over the country often have slightly differing instructions to give to their patients because there is no one strict set of directions. My oncologist explained that there are two national organizations that typically provide most of the guidelines for thyroid cancer treatment, and while both provide roughly the same information, there can be a few minor differences between them. To further complicate things, the guidelines get periodically updated, and not every doctor immediately changes their standard procedures when this happens. It's similar to computer operating systems. Your home PC might be running Windows 10, while your friend the one who went to art college, always buys Mac. Your parents only use the computer for email and sharing pictures of your brother and sister who they've always liked better than you, so they never upgraded from the cheap system they bought off the shelf at Walmart and are still running Windows 8. Meanwhile, your work computers are still running Windows XP because none of the custom industry software will work with a newer operating system. In fact, even if everyone is running Windows 10, some might have disabled automatic updates and are running the original version that came with your computer when they bought it two years ago, while you are running the most up-to-date copy because your OCD won't allow you to ignore the little update notice in the system tray. Thyroid treatment and RAI instructions have essentially the same issue. Dr. Garfunkel is using recommendations based on what the National Cancer Institute issued back in 2015, while Dr. Oates focuses on what the American Cancer Society provided in 2018. Neither is necessarily wrong, but as medicine is an ever-evolving field, sometimes it takes a while for everyone to get on the same page, and even then the instructions are likely to change again based on new studies. Another thing to bear in mind, and this is very encouraging to those of us diagnosed with thyroid cancer, the sheer amount of patients who are treated and survive this type of the disease is so high that doctors have a lot of leeway to mitigate the level of treatment. Unlike a more aggressive cancer like pancreatic, where the focus is simply trying to give the patient a few more months of life, thyroid cancer treatment focuses on adding years for those who get it. Thus, doctors are less stringent with the advice they give and are more willing to adjust the treatment. For example, instead of complete hospital isolation during RAI where all materials a patient arrives with are incinerated later to prevent contamination, patients are allowed the comfort of their own homes as long as they follow certain guidelines. And that is the focus of this video, Home RAI Isolation. If your medical professionals have prepared you for hospital isolation during your RAI treatment, I'm afraid you may have wasted your time watching so far. But thanks for helping my channel's analytics. Again, it must be stressed that what you're seeing here is my own personal experience based on my own specific circumstances following my own medical professional's advice. If at any time you're watching this and thinking, good God, he's going to kill someone with this information. Remember what I said earlier, different doctors 
different advice. Something that almost all doctors do agree on, do not try to spend your RAI isolation in a hotel room. You will be recklessly exposing staff and other guests to contamination, and believe me, the poor housekeeping staff is already exposed to enough contamination in their regular day-to-day -day lives. Ideally, home RAI isolation patients live alone in their own house with no pets. While potentially sad and lonely, it is ideal in terms of lessening the risk of radiation exposure to others. My circumstances, though, did include living with others. My household consists of myself, my wife, our two children, and three pets. We live in an apartment house with neighbors both below and adjacent to us. It was decided that I would spend my five-day isolation in my bedroom while my wife slept on our couch. The bedrooms in my unit are on opposite sides of the house, however my neighbor's bedroom was directly adjacent to mine, so my bed was moved to the opposite side of the room to maintain the required safe distance. Here is a list of items I prepared prior to RAI. Large garbage bags. Anything taken into my bedroom during isolation would remain in my bedroom during isolation, including all trash. Three large containers of disposable bleach wipes. Don't be stingy when it comes to buying these because you may go through more than you expect. Easy to cook LID approved meals and snacks. I was still required to follow the low iodine diet and my wife and kids weren't always around to prepare my meals. While nutritionally questionable and obviously boring, my diet consisted mainly of cheap steaks, baked potatoes, non-iodized salt, and gross margarine, with the occasional can of Campbell's soup and plate of spaghetti. It was only for a week and you don't want to spend any more time in the kitchen and out of isolation than necessary. Snacks included Oreo cookies and almond milk, both allowed on the low iodine diet. I also had a few bags of jalapeno kettle chips after phoning the company and confirming they didn't use iodized salt. All of this was in addition to the massive box of lemon candy many of us are told to suck on during therapy. A large box of disposable gloves. It was very important to minimize contamination, so I would go through a pair any time I left the bedroom to use the toilet or prepare a meal. For entertainment, I had my bedroom television, Nintendo Switch, smartphone, and tablet. I spent the entire five days watching Netflix, Crunchyroll, and Voodoo, reading manga on my tablet, and playing Zelda on my Switch. This next part is possibly controversial and definitely gross. Gross. To minimize risk to my wife and kids by avoiding contaminating our living space as much as possible, during the five days of isolation, I completely skipped showering, shaving, and brushing my teeth. They were able to use a toilet in an empty apartment in my building, but not the shower. So as long as I didn't use our shower or brush my teeth, I avoided contaminating areas my family had to use. There are protocols for cleaning the shower during RAI, but for me it was just easier to be gross. Gross. For five days. When I mentioned this online, another patient vehemently disagreed and said it was vital to wash regularly in order to clean the toxins off the body. This is a perfect example of what I said earlier about different instructions from different doctors. In their situation, which was hospital rather than home isolation, they were told it was important to wash regularly and not to essentially stew in their own radioactive juices. They also had medical staff helping them during this period. In home isolation, you're on your own for much of it. I spoke with my oncologist about this and he said there was no harm in not bathing or cleaning one's teeth during RAI. In fact, bathing wasn't even mentioned in the documentation they sent home with patients because it was just assumed they would shower normally. The radiation will naturally leave the body and dissipate regardless of how much or how little the patient showers. So the only protocols mentioning bathing was how to clean up the bathroom afterward to minimize the amount of contamination exposed to others. I also spent the entire isolation period almost completely naked except for the single pair of briefs I wore the day I swallowed the pill. This kept me from contaminating any more clothes than necessary. 
Again, gross. Gross. But I was essentially a prisoner at this point, so who was I going to impress? For meals, the recommendation was to use disposable plates, but I can't stand them. Nor is it practical to eat steak on styrofoam. So I use my regular dinner plates, cups, and silverware, cleaning them thoroughly with bleach wipes after eating and keeping them in a neat stack in my bedroom until the end of isolation. When using the toilet, as ordered, I sat for everything, including urination, before flushing twice and cleaning everything with bleach wipes, which I would then bring back to my bedroom to discard in the garbage bag where I was keeping all of my RAI trash. After isolation was over, I washed all my bedding, including the mattress pad, and the few contaminated clothes in as hot of water as my washer allowed. I then had my first shower, shave, and teeth cleaning before washing all the dishes I used during isolation in scalding hot water. Finally, I cleaned my TV, remote, smartphone, switch, and tablet with bleach wipes. During RAI, you need to keep reminding yourself that you are literally toxic. Your skin, sweat, body oil, urine, feces, everything about you is contaminated. In a lot of ways, it's like you committed a crime and you're trying to keep any physical evidence from being left behind. In the end, it still boils down to following the instructions your doctor gives you, but always be ready to ask questions. If anything you heard in this video or anywhere else online sounds better than what your doctor told you, ask them about it. Perhaps they'll agree, or at the very least will explain why in your circumstances that advice wouldn't be practical. Good luck. You got this.